Stepping from our back door into a piece of paradise is something most of us only dream of. But in this series... Open your eyes. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous! Wow! We're making those dreams come true. This isn't my garden. The impact of a beautiful garden can be overwhelming. Does it make a difference? It has changed my life, absolutely changed my life. So along with my hard-working team... You've all got to get on, so play nicely. I'm travelling far and wide to surprise some very special people. Oh, come in. <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh, my God! <laughs> and turning their tired backyards... This is a no-go zone for me. ...into dream gardens. Welcome to Love Your Garden. This week, I'm in Canterbury, in the heart of Kent, the Garden of England. This most English of cities is home to a man who, despite paying a terrible price while serving in our armed forces, continues to help people in need, whatever the challenge. For more than 200 years, the British Army Regiment known as the Gurkhas has served the Crown in major conflicts across the globe. To be a Gurkha, honestly, it is a very, very special thing for us. It is a privilege and an honour. We take Nepali boys from the hills of Nepal and we turn them into Gurkha soldiers. That is something that we have done since 1815. One of its proud members is Hari Buddha Magar. Hari's been invited to the uh, Brigade of Gurkhas Visitor Centre here in Folkestone for a briefing, and I thought it would be the perfect place to surprise him. In the spring of 2010, Hari was only a few weeks into his first tour in Helmand province in Afghanistan. Hari was part of a familiarisation patrol, and so it was one of the first patrols that he went on uh, in Afghanistan. Hari's wife, Urmila, was at home with their two-year-old son, Brian, when she received the devastating news. They came to my home and they told me Hari was injured. He trod on a, an IED which detonated. As a result of the incident, Hari lost both his legs and went through hours of surgery on the rest of his body. The first thing Harry said when he woke up was, have I done something wrong? Uh, are my soldiers OK? To have gone through something like that and still be worried about, you know, everybody else is incredible. With the support of Urmila and his children, Harry began the long road to recovery. Despite his extensive injuries, Harry persevered. Let's not forget he was a Gurkha soldier who signed up to, to help people and you know, he's still doing it today. Since being discharged, Harry has worked tirelessly to help others. In 2015, the nation was shocked when Cumbria was hit by the biggest floods in recent history. Thousands of people were left homeless and Harry turned up to help. So I got the phone call from Harry and he said, uh, where are you, Steve? Uh, so my answer was, we're in Cumbria just doing some flood work. OK, Steve, I want to come up and help you, is that OK? Stripping walls, carrying furniture, even stripping floors. He's amazing. While he may have learnt to cope with the physical impact of his injuries, the emotional scars remain. Hari has been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. And like so many veterans in his position, needs a calming space to retreat to. But his garden, that's overlooked on three sides, is no sanctuary. And that's where I come in. Hari's comrades obviously hold him in very high esteem and have nominated him for a new garden. Today, he's in a meeting to discuss fellow soldiers wounded in action, and I'm here to surprise him. Only, there's a problem. Colonel James Robinson knows why I'm here, but Hari has no idea who I am this should be interesting. So, Kali Kali Hamid Jamagarson, 
and the final alicati update. Colonel, I'm terribly sorry to interrupt you. Thank you very much. That Not sounded very impressive. Alan, very warm welcome to you. Thank you. I'm looking for Harry. Corporal Harry. If Harry is Good here. Good This is Corporal Harry. Good Hello. to meet you, Hello, Harry. How are you? Nice to see you. Nice to meet you, sir. Well, you do lots and lots for people all over Britain. They tell me, though, there's one thing which you've not really been able to sort out, and that's your garden. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I, I'm Alan Titchmarsh, and I'm going to come <laughs> and look at your garden. <laughs> <laughs> so, Harry, take me to your garden. Thank you. Let me have a look at it. Come on. Yeah. Straight onto the deck. And straight away, I can see what the biggest problem is. This segmented garden is like three gardens in one, and it isn't just hard to get your head around, it's too painful for Harry to use his prosthetics all the time, and getting his wheelchair from one section to the other is a real mission. This goes all the way, right the way down here, and right, but you've got a wall here. <laughs> yes, especially if I'm in my wheelchair, I have to go inside my house, Pass a couple of doors <laughs> and you get into the front and go around and come up here. So. Well, that's ridiculous. But access for Hari's wheelchair is just one of the problems. Being on a corner, this property has very little privacy. You're quite overlooked, in a way, by the houses over there. And then we get this dog leg round here. It's quite complicated. Because <laughs> just the other side of that road, you've got a yard there. Yes. So, OK. These are good challenges, but challenges that I'm going to have to think about. Now, you spend lots of time doing things for other people. What do you want here, your spot in the garden? What should that be like? Uh, some, somewhere um, that I can sit quietly. I do have a PTSD, yeah. um, and uh, that helps me. The garden, the, the green things, and yeah. the, the trees, plants, that helps me to um, settle down. Well, I think it's time you had a little place for you when you do so much for other folks. So in spite of the fact that it's incredibly awkward, that it goes right the way around the house, that it shoots all over the place and everybody's overlooking it, we'll give it a go. All right, see what we can do for you. I think that's easier Pleasure. for you, Ellen. <laughs> You're very welcome. Hari's garden presents a challenge we've never had before. Somehow, we need to tie all the areas together and make sure Hari has access to them all. And it needs to have a theme. I've decided to take inspiration from Harry's much-loved homeland. See you, Harry. Hi. All the best. Yeah. Take care. See you later. Bye. So I'm sending him and his family off for a few days while we get to work. Harry's been through so much. I think it's high time he has the garden, the calming garden that he so desperately needs. So I'm bringing in my own little army to do something about it. They may not be the Gurkhas, but my trusted squad of landscapers waste no time in stripping back Hari's boring backyard and knocking down that unneeded wall. Meanwhile, my trusty lieutenants, David Dominey, Katie Rushworth and Francis Tophill, have just arrived, ready to hear my plan of attack. Right, we have here an inspiring man that we need to make an inspirational garden for. Now then, what do you all know about Nepal? Nepal, what does it say? It's got eight Just of the world's it? biggest mountains. mountains. We're in Kent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OK, so we'll leave aside eight of the world's biggest mountains. Greenery. <laughs> Greenery. Yeah, lush. Green calms Hari down. He said this to me, so green is very important. OK. Right? Yeah. Well, let me show you what Nepal looks like. Yeah. You're right on the mountains, David, but look, the lowlands in front, very agricultural, very green. Mm -hmm. um, this Lots is the of kind of house, pretty little chalet, yeah. uh, but again, growing all their own food, livestock. And look at this little garden here in Kathmandu. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. How that's beautiful lovely. is that? Yeah. That's a green stream just yeah. coming oh, down, isn't it? There's no yeah. formality about it. It's all sinuous lines. Yeah. So we can bear that in mind. Yeah. Now, Katie, round here, this is the back door coming out here. This a whole area here, which is a kind of backyard. Yeah. That would be a great dining area. Oh, but again, okay. having seen what you've seen there, bananas colour, like it to reflect that. Okay, you so you want a nice dining area to entertain friends and family yep. that looks and feel like Nepal in Kent. Absolutely right. Okay. Francis, yes. this little area down here, 
That cabbage palm I really want to keep. Yes, good. Beautiful thing. Mm. Harry's wife, Miller, she comes out into the garden to pray, okay. and I'd like to have her quiet corner somewhere down there. So if you could take charge, Francis, of that area there, okay. thinking very much of Nepalese plants, think of those rhododendrons, and you're going up good. into the foothills and the mountains. Me. Gosh, Nepal, Nepal, <laughs> Nepal. David, I like a stream running down here. You saw the shape of that yeah, path. Yes, yes. I want some kind of some kind of flowing stream down there. So if you can get on digging that out. Thank you. What are you doing, Alan? What am I doing? Well, when he's dug that stream, <laughs> <laughs> I'll concentrate on dressing it because it's got to look as natural as possible. And I want also to work on Harry's sitting area okay. so that he gets to sit out here and be peaceful. This is a tall order yeah. for a man who loves his homeland and now lives in Kent, which he also loves. Yeah. But I want him to feel that when he comes here, he's coming home. Turning this U-shaped garden into a little corner of Nepal is an immense challenge. So David and the boys get straight on with the first task, my Nepalese mountain stream. It's the most complicated water feature we've ever built and will run the entire length of one side of the house. So it's critical we get it right. When it comes to calming, tranquil gardens, there's nothing quite like the sight and sound of water. So, to show you what I have in mind for Hari, I've come to nearby Hearn Bay to see a garden where this vital element and its surroundings are blended to perfection. This is like stepping through a proscenium arch onto a stage and Here's the set in front of you. That's wonderful. I, I really hadn't thought of that before, but I was on the stage. Former dancer Patience Vince has created a garden with water at its heart that transports you to faraway places. We've moved 17 times, and this is to be... The it, last move. Yeah. This is, it's all here now. It's all here now, so it was to be a collection of, of reminders of where we've been. A garden of memories. A garden of memories, yes. This elegant pond would be enough for most gardens, but Patience has added curved rendered walls, one of which is a waterfall. The white walls are, are Greece, memories of Greece. And it's this gentle flow of water that really adds to the sensory experience. So in Canterbury, we're not just building a pond. This mountain stream will eddy and flow just like the real thing. David's dividing it into three sections. The lower section will be a still reflecting pool, but the top pool and winding stream will be fed by pumps that'll circulate the water to give the illusion of a flowing river. But I want to bring Hari as close as possible to his new water feature. And in Patience's garden, the use of decking not only brings you right up to the water, but across it as well, immersing you in the experience. Where are we going now? I would think um, to Japan. Japan. With no jet lag no whatsoever. Jet lag. This is a wonderful green oasis. A, yes. A haven of calm, and that I must get that right for Hari. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Shades of Nepal, of, of home, feeling mm. that he's back there, and smells as well. I know it's a terrible weed, but for me, bracken is the smell of home. It's mm. Ilkley Moor. Right. Oh, I'm straight back. I am straight back. So, to achieve this effect in the garden in Canterbury... Oh, it feels like it's from the Himalayas, I can tell you that. The boys are adding a sinuous deck for Harry's wheelchair. Now we're using this flexible board here to try and get as natural a curve as we can. And then we're just going to mark it with a pencil. And next, we're cutting off the ends to follow that beautiful curve. Creating a garden that inspires you and touches your soul is quite a challenge. To achieve the same thing for somebody else and their sensibilities is even more difficult. But it's something that we really must do for Hari.
We're in Canterbury, attempting to transform a wraparound plot into a Himalayan haven for a brave Gurkha soldier and his family. The gully for my mountain stream has been dug out and limed. 1,200 gallons. And maybe some time. And he's now being dressed with large rocks to cover the edges of the liner. And David and the boys have almost finished the deck that runs alongside it. Got it. Got it. I've set the team the ambitious task of recreating a landscape that's thousands of miles away in Kent. But all this is for no ordinary man. In Hari's homeland of Nepal, serving in the Brigade of Gurkhas is considered an honour. And every year, thousands of Nepalese boys, some as young as 16, apply. We take 147, give or take, each year into the British Army and we're screening in the figures of around 10,000 Nepali boys in Nepal. So Harry was the cream of Nepal. In 1999, at the age of 20, Harry left behind his family to travel thousands of miles to the 1st Battalion barracks in Aldershot. Before he was injured in Afghanistan, he'd served the regiment for more than a decade, including tours of Bosnia and Kosovo. So it's not surprising that after such an extraordinary journey, and despite his injuries, Harry continues to help others. If you were to ask me what sort of person Harry was, and you were military, I'd just tell you he was a Gurkha, and that would tell you everything you'd need to know. Harry is motivated, loyal, hardworking. Once you made a friend of a Gurkha, then you've really got a friend. He actually likes to help. He'll inspire all the guys, all the girls that are doing that work, He'll inspire the people who are in trouble. And you know what? He'll smile through the whole thing. And he's got that smile that would light Wembley Stadium. Giving something back to this brave man and his family is the least we can do. And this is how we're planning to transform his garden. We're using the shape of the plot to make three distinctive areas. Kate is building a colourful dining space with the flavour of a Kathmandu street market. On the other side, Francis is creating a calming seating area around a temple in which Hari's wife, Urmila, can pray. And David and I are building Hari a mountain stream to remind him of his childhood in the Himalayan foothills. But one of the biggest problems with the existing garden is a lack of privacy. So David's on the case. Oh, I'm made up with these. I am made up with this. These are steel panels to cover the gap. And in it, we've got rhododendron flowers cut, which is the national flower of Nepal. Meanwhile, Katie's dining space is getting a lick of paint. How good is this? It's going to be done in no time. When they heard we were doing the garden for a fellow Gurkha, some of the regiment's new recruits couldn't wait to help out. Just like Hari, these boys have left behind their families in Nepal for a career in the British Army. You must miss home. Yeah, it's not really easy being far away from home. And what do you miss most about home? You must miss your mum's cooking. Yes, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> it's always what people say. <laughs> I've returned and can't wait to get started on my mountain stream in the longest section of the garden. It dries on again. Although it's more like a burst dike at the moment. I'm trying to get it so it's a slightly more natural gurgle. To get this feature right, I'm placing stones, rocks and pebbles to hide anything that looks artificial. What's really critical, I reckon, when you make any kind of pond, stream or water feature is that you don't see liner. It completely ruins it. If the water only comes up to about there and you've got this great two-inch gap which shows this beauty line. The beauty is brilliant because it's flexible, it's waterproof, it's long-lasting, it'll last 20 years if you don't stick a garden fork through it. But you don't want to look at it. Once it's under the water, it's black, it falls into the shadows, then it's OK. But I'll get very twitchy if it's showing. It works quite well if you grade them larger down to smaller rather than mixing them all up in a jumble because that's what sort of happens when water's flowing through. These same principles apply to all water features, from the smallest squirt to a rolling river like this one. 
however many rocks you think you're going to need, you'll need a lot more. It takes a lot of rock to do the job really well. If you're mean with your rock, your stream will look mean. And we don't want that for Harry. While I struggle manfully on, <laughs> Francis calls for assistance. I've got a delivery. And it's quite a big one, but luckily Harry has so many friends, I have a bit of help. <laughs> <laughs> ready for action. How are you doing? When he went up to help the relief effort during the Cumbrian floods, Harry teamed up with a charity made up of firemen from all over the UK. And inspired by his example, they decided to come to Kent to give us a hand. Francis wants to create a quiet oasis for Harry's wife, Ermila. I'll find the paints and the paintbrushes. And it seems these boys can do more than just fight fires. Their new temple's going up in no time. The plan is to sit the temple on a concrete base, which Frances has big plans for. She's using a stencil to create a bespoke floor. What I've done is just got two coats of spray mount on the back of my stencil, which just sticks it to the ground. I've cut out a lovely design, which I'm going to repeat throughout this concrete. Now, the main thing you have to think about when you're doing this is what kind of paint you use. And essentially, what you need is something very hard wearing and something that's designed to be outdoors and painted onto concrete. Just roll off the excess. This is a really easy way of making any concrete space look more interesting. What are you doing down there then? I'm doing a stencil. How's it look from up there? Not very nice. <laughs> Well, you haven't pulled the stencil off yet. I can't see the effect. You've got to take it off. I appreciate your honesty, Dave. It's OK. <laughs> Don't worry, Francis. I have faith in you. Meanwhile, out front, Katie's been shopping. Woo! What do you think? Exotic. <laughs> gorgeous, isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. No Nepalese garden would be complete without some native or at least near native plants. Okay. That gives you a feeling of the Himalayan foothills. Yeah. And the beautiful banana. Yeah, it will be. <laughs> <laughs> and a nice clematis. Look at that. Yay! Potted sunshine. Before we can plant them in Katie's dining area, we need to decide on a suitably Nepalese backdrop. OK, Alan, so I have these. What are you doing, carpet bedding? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit leery, it? Isn't is it is a bit. Have you noticed how, when I'm talking to her, my accent goes right back to what it used to be like? And, and the posh bit, since I've been coming down south, sort of almost entirely disappeared, do not it? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, then, let's try the, the blue ones down there, or as you'd say, let's try blue one. Blue one. Blue one. Blue one, yeah. <laughs> If we go along the line there, yep. below that top nice. course, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Yep. To avoid marking it with soil, the wall covering will go up once the tall trees and shrubs have gone in. OK. Yep. It's lovely putting these apple trees in there, because Harry's dad on the farm used to grow apple trees with potatoes underneath. Done the wing fits. Well, have you got some spuds? I rescued some from the front garden. Did Hang you? on. Yes. Right. Here we go. Oh, bless. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, pop them in there. So we should put them in, shouldn't we? So Alongside the trees and climbers, we're adding some broad-leaved exotics. This is a plant that... There's only one word really suits it. It's sexy. It's a big, high-impact plant. It's called Tetrapanax. If you look at the undersides of the leaves, you'll see they're really downy, softly hairy. And when the young ones come out, they're covered in almost amber hairs. It's not totally fully hardy, but then it wouldn't be, would it? It's from Taiwan. But in sheltered locales like this, you can get it through the winter, and it makes this massive great plant, which really is a great architectural presence. They used to use some of the pith, or probably still do, in the plant to make rice paper. Pith paper, really, um, and that's why it's called the rice paper plant. Fabulous. Yay! Oh, 
wonder if the orange will want to be. Oh, right. do you dare! <laughs> <laughs> the team are making great progress, but there's still an awful lot to do in this garden. And not only that, there's some very Himalayan weather on the horizon. We've been so lucky with the weather so far, it's held off. We're due rain virtually any minute now, which... We can work in rain, we can plant in rain. The trouble is, soil and earth turn to mud, and then they start trampling over paving and decking, and lovely areas of pristine paving turn into rather nasty-looking things. It's a bit of a worry. Here in Canterbury, there's bad weather on the horizon, so we're doubling our efforts. It's an up a bit, down a bit for you. Uh, down a bit. As we attempt to bring a little bit of Nepal to Hari's garden. But over in Katie's dining area, the planting has stopped, and instead, there's a lot of head scratching. What's this going up? Oh, well, you say going up. Um, it's a pergola. It's been down a while. We're Hi. hoping it's going to go up. But Hi. it's proving a little Keep tricky. That's <laughs> <laughs> a nervous laugh. Yeah. So it's going over the whole eating area? Yes, hopefully. If that's not enough, the rain's finally arrived. In Nepal, midsummer is monsoon season. And if they can put up with it in the Himalayas, then so can we. And speaking of Nepal, I've been in contact with Hari's family in Kathmandu and they've responded. Alan, we've had a parcel. Looks like it's come all the way from Nepal. Do you know anything oh, about this? I've been expecting that, yeah. This is Harry's brother, who sent various bits over. Now, I don't know what the bits are. There's ah. all sorts in here. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Well, this... Oops. Uh, now, that's Mum and Dad. Really? Yeah. And these are to go... We've got to make a small temple for the garden. Yeah? Well, when I say we... we... Hold on a minute, there's a... Did he ring a bell? Yes. <laughs> While the boys assemble her metal pergola, Kate is creating some unusual planters to match. It seems she's raided a local office. Ta-da! So that's it. A couple of draining holes in the bottom. I'm going to prime it, paint it. This job's a good one. Once the primer coat's dried, she's painting them a vibrant red to match our tropical planting scheme. Oh, I'll give you that. Yeah. I will give you that. They look good, don't they? They do. It's probably one of the best bits of recycling or upcycling that we've done. I know. I said, brilliant. It's Francis normally comes up with these uh, ideas. You sure you haven't nicked it off of her? No, you. <laughs> David, just because you can't come up with a good idea, stop picking on hey, Katie. Ganging up on me there. That was a compliment to you, that. <laughs> <laughs> While the team cracks on, I've taken advantage of a break in the clouds to meet up with Hari. I want to learn more about what's made him the extraordinary man he is today. What was life like in Nepal? Tell me about the place where you lived and what it was like. Uh, we used to go barefoot. Uh, so you had no shoes? Uh, no, no shoes, yes. Yeah, uh, early days. And uh, all the people grow their food for themselves, apart from some salt. Uh, some of kerosene, I carry 20 litres of kerosene from all the way down to my village. So it takes, I think, about 14 days to get up and down. A fortnight, two weeks to get... Yes, yeah. yes, you go on the way, stay in the field. We didn't have any tents. Wake up next morning, keep going, and that's how it used to be. What made you want to join the Gurkhas? It's my dream to actually, uh, and I'm here to contribute. So I came here, I joined the army here to contribute. Tell me about what happened and the day it happened. Just talk me through the events of that dreadful day. I went to patrol and I was about nine to ten. I can't remember what number I was, but it just certainly went bang and uh, I had a radio on the left hand ear, but uh, my right ear was uh, ringing and uh, I didn't worry about myself at that time. I just felt that, you know, I felt my mission kind of things. Um, and uh, the first I think what I said was, uh, I'm sorry, sir. But your life changed overnight. Yeah. You know, I lost my legs and I'm not going to be the same when I go back to home. Uh, I just felt that um, 
You know, I didn't give enough to my resume. You gave everything. But you did pull round. You did convince yourself to carry on. You know, we've got a great family and... Um... Are they very proud of you? I think so. <laughs> what makes you happy? When I, when I help others. Just helping others. I don't think I've ever met anybody as driven. It's your sole goal in life is to make a difference to other people's lives. I live my life in a very simple value. You know, we should help each other. So. It's clear that Har has been deeply affected by the incident, but remains determined to triumph over tragedy. And I'm determined to reward him for all he's done to help others. I don't think I've ever met another man as selfless as Harry. If anybody deserves a garden, Harry does. So, work is cracking on. And Frances is getting her feet wet. Bring it, bring it up. All around Kathmandu, there are murals painted with the eyes of Buddha. To the people of Nepal, he's their guide and protector. So Francis has created one of her own to look over the family in their new garden. But it's a bit lost on the lads. What do you think? Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> you don't sound certain. <laughs> OK. Unfortunately, filing cabinets don't come with drainage holes as standard, so Katie's making some final modifications. Now, because these are such huge containers, I'm going to save some space and some money in compost by filling them with these polystyrene wiggly worms, I suppose. And I'm going to half fill each container with them and then top up the rest of the soil before I plant. It will also hold on to lots of moisture, so create a bit of a reservoir at the bottom. Down by the river, I'm doing my best impersonation of a Nepalese hill farmer. And this is a Himalayan birch, you know, foothills of the Himalayas, Nepal. It's really of the place, but also of Harry's place as well, I think. This should do nicely, a lovely, delicate green tracery. To make this area a soothing spot for Hari, I'm employing a lush green planting scheme, which, thanks to the weather, is becoming more lush by the minute. There are, allegedly, more shades of green than of any other colour. And as a gardener, I would subscribe to that. Lots of different shades, but also lots of different leaf shapes. Pittosporum with its fragrant flowers and sort of spoon-shaped leaves. The sharp-edged leaves of myrtle. These long, thin ones of choisier Aztec gold. And then the big sort of fig leaf of the false castor oil farm. Just a glorious mixture with bamboos at the back. So it's not oppressive. It's cradling. David's found the one dry spot on the site to finish his woodwork project. Harry's brother sent this over from Nepal. I've even got a full diagram. Oh, that's amazing. I don't think we've done too bad because we found this cabinet in the garden. But look, he's got right to the details of... Oh, yeah, the, the oh, yeah, yeah. Put the bell on. We put a little section there. Go and hang it in. Oh, my, my hands are mucky. You put and it okay, on. OK, OK. Uh, there we go. So the bell goes in there. An area even for the, for the top. Have you even got the diagram to say where the picture of Hari's mum and dad are to go and then Lord Ganesh and Lord Buddha as well going in there? I think they're going to be made up with this. I think they'll be pretty chuffed. I didn't think you had it in your day. Hey. Not to be outdone, Kate is planning something special for her pergola. She's using acrylic sheets to create a multicoloured roof. So they look like slices of colour and the hope that on a beautiful sunny day, unlike today, they're going to shine on the floor like a kaleidoscope or a stained glass window. Here's hoping. All she has to do is secure the tiles to the metal frame using a bead of silicone. But this is a Katie feature, so it's never that straightforward. Blue in that corner. Oh, no, I don't... Uh, no, not if there's too many blues there now. The mountain stream may be bubbling away nicely, but to complete the look, it needs some life in it. So poor old Francis is paddling again. She's softening the edges with a heart-shaped pickerel weed and flowering water plantain. All Francis needs to do is place the aquatics still in their pots at the ideal watermark and then leave them to their own devices. 
With an array of plants going in, this part of the garden is really coming together. But Katie faces a different challenge. She's planting up her filing cabinets with herbs and bright sunflowers. Now, she wants some tall pot plants for the other side. Hi, Dave. What? This one needs to go in as well. What, one of these little pots? Yeah. Seriously? No. Come this on. is this is too big for that. It's not, it's not. It's going to work. It's going to work. <gasps> oh, 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 no, this oh. is definitely it, it... too big for that. You, oh. you don't... <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, exactly. Rat. Exactly. I won't be coming to yours for drinks measures, will I? <laughs> Look at that. Can't we plant it in the ground? No, it's got to go in a pot. We're going to need a bigger pot. We're going to need a bigger pot. <laughs> Here in Canterbury, the heavens have opened again. We're racing to finish Hari's Nepal-inspired garden. David has improvised and found a pot that's big enough for Katie's rice paper plant. Oi, Cuddles, have a look at this. <laughs> hey, Presto. Okay, will you hold it steady then? I'll hold it steady. <laughs> Thanks for holding it steady. <laughs> Ready. Okay. All right. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> Come on, my little beauty. Oh, blooming perfect. My seating area for Hari is almost complete, but as a final touch, I found a way to pay tribute to the spirit of this selfless and courageous man. Do you want to see my post? That's interesting. Well, it's a lovely piece of oak. Beautiful wood, isn't it? Beautiful. And it has a wonderful legend on it. The man says he is not afraid of dying. He is either lying or he is a Gurkha. <laughs> that's brilliant. And after what I've heard today from Harry, I think that's absolutely true. Look at the right way around. Do you want me I think the writing ought to face inwards, yeah. So Harry will sit here and yeah. we'll see. See the legend on Yeah, there. fantastic. Hey, that looks pretty good, Dave, doesn't it? Hey, Presta. This has been an epic build. But no Nepalese garden would be complete without the nation's favourite flower. This is a plant that British gardeners will recognise as an old favourite. But all the people from Nepal who I've spoken to see this plant and immediately think of home. It's a rhododendron, of course. It's only been a couple of hundred years that we've had this plant in, in Britain. These plants are brought over from Nepal and the Himalayas by plant hunters for big nurseries and we've bred them ever since. Did I say that the pool's full of open space? Yeah. I'm not feeling it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the day of that, that move. We're almost there now. Oh my goodness. Do you know, sometimes you think you're being smiled on, aren't you? We have been soaked, we have been wind blown. And we're now almost at the point of view of revealing it to Harry, and the sun's come out. Yeah. Oh. It's lovely, isn't it? Well done. Well done, boys Very and girls. Lovely. With some warm sun on our backs, we're motoring. Knackered. That really is a lovely bright orange, isn't it? I think they look great. And our garden for Hari and his family is finally done. How was it for you? Well, scaling it for us, wasn't it? <laughs> it was a real battle. It's so big and it's wrap around. It's a U-shaped garden. Yeah. You've made something that's quite, quite astonishing here. Just try and think back. To what it looked like, and well, you can't. No, you can't. Mm -hmm. But it's a this is a transformation like no other transformation. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much. Give yourselves a cheer. Hey! A few days ago, we took on one of our most ambitious builds to date. A garden that was not only an incredibly challenging shape, but had almost no redeeming features. With limited accessibility and a total lack of privacy, 
It was far from the quiet green space Hari so badly needed. Now a little piece of Nepal has come to Kent. Not only can Hari now move freely through this lush space, but he and his family will be reminded of home at every turn. Frances and her team of firemen built a temple as a place for Ermilla to reflect and pray. Katie's stunning dining area is where the whole family can come together. David redefined the garden borders, providing the privacy that was so desperately needed. We created a winding stream complete with curved decking, mirroring the sinuous lines of the Nepalese landscape. And we built Hari a very special sitting area for him to take it all in. For more information on how we built the garden, go to itv.com forward slash Alan. The entire team have done their best to bring a little slice of Nepal to the county of Kent. Welcome home. Thank you so much, Alan. But you may not recognize it. <laughs> I just hope we've earned Harry's seal of approval. Okay, Harry. Open your eyes. Wow! Wow! I never thought that this is this big. Uh, wow! Look at the red and red ones. It's a bit of home. Yes. A bit of Nepal. <laughs> You're gonna get a flag. <laughs> <laughs> so this is for Amila. Wow. Amila to see it. What do you think? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Specialist. My wife would love it. And we've done very smooth paving, so it's fine oh, for your I, legs and for your wheelchair. I like the stones. Yeah. This is fantastic. Bit of alpine stuff there. Ah, oh, I didn't do like that. <laughs> Can you believe it's your garden? No. Never believed it. That sunflower makes me remember the Nepal, and uh, yeah. we say that wherever sun moves, it follows that. Yeah. But I don't know if this is that, that true or not. It's but true, I, they do. My mom and dad used to tell me that. <laughs> Sometimes you need to dine outside, so... Wow! And the flag of Nepal as well. Wow. And you remember your two apple trees that were planted? Well, they're in here now. And because your dad used to plant potatoes under your apple tree... You're <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I'll tell my dad, I think. I'll take a picture and send it to me. Some pretty planes up there, panes and colored glass. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, excellent. Well, you wanted a green, quiet space where you could sit. Yes. Follow me. And on the way to Hari's green space, David's found the perfect spot for the shrine, filled with memories from Hari's family back home. Now, your brother sent us those from your mum and dad. You need to be able to sit and look at it. So here's your green seed. From here, Hari can be soothed by the calming sounds of his mountain stream. You're right. <laughs> Hari has one more surprise in store from a woman who champions the Gurkhas at every turn. So we thought you might like this one. <laughs> Joanna Lumley, your Dee Dee. How very, very good to be talking to you. Now, Hari, I know you've got the most extraordinary garden, and Alan and the team have worked so hard, and I hope it's absolutely perfect. A little taste of Nepal for you. Hari, what you have done for people in the past is just extraordinary. You are an ongoing hero. Everything you've done, both as a Gurkha and now as somebody who never stops helping other people, never stops thinking about other people. For what you've done, for our country, I just want to say, Derai, derai, danyabad. Sari ramro. 
Hari Saab. Namaste. I shall be watching you. <laughs> Take care. Good luck. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Ah. Hari's wife, Ermila, and his boys, Brian and Ubran, finally have the outdoor space they deserve. <laughs> oh, wait, what do you think? Do you like our garden? <laughs> the next time I come and see you, will you recognize me? Yes, I will. <laughs> we can all learn an enormous amount from Hari Saab. I have. I'll never forget this episode of Love Your Garden. And I hope you won't either. And I hope Harry and his family get tremendous pleasure from the garden. Till the next time. Bye-bye. A few days later, I'm thrilled to see that Harry and his family are making the most of their new garden.